Hello everyone, welcome to the video on amino glycosides, medicinal chemistry aspects. In this video, I am going to explain about streptomycin, kenamycin and neomycin and their mechanism of action, structure, structure activity relationship and clinical uses. This is my YouTube channel, just type in my name J. Sarajesh, you will get the all the videos. If you like the video, do subscribe and share. Let's get into the topic. See, amino glycosides, as the name indicates, they have a glycosidic bond. Amino rings attached to sugars with a glycosidic bond, hence chemically they are called as amino glycosides. Now, mechanism of action, when you see they, they are called as protein synthesis inhibitor. They inhibit protein synthesis in bacteria. In bacteria, there are 50s ribosomal unit and 30s ribosomal unit. Between that mRNA will get inserted and with the help of tRNA, protein synthesis will happen. Now, what happens with this amino glycosides is, they irreversibly bind to 30s ribosomal unit. 30s ribosomal unit, they will bind and they reduce the amount of proteins being synthesized and they cause errors in amino acid sequence. And both of them will cause the death of amino, death of bacteria. Now, understand this one, usually the protein synthesis inhibitors are bacterial static in nature, but amino glycosides can also cause death, hence they are considered as bacteriocidal. So, they have both, both of the features. They can work as bacteriostatic by stopping bacteria from multiplying. They can also act as bacteriocidal by killing them. Now, one more important feature is they have strong post-antibiotic effect. That means, they remain effective even hours after the levels of antibiotic dropped below minimum inhibitory concentration. When the antibiotic concentration is fallen below the minimum inhibitory concentration, still they show their actions. That is what is called as post-antibiotic effect. Moving further. So, you have a lot of amino glycosides derivatives are there like amicacin, gentamicin, neomycin, streptomycin, tobromycin. Streptomycin is specifically used to treat TB, mycobacterium, tuberculosis and tobromycin is topically used to treat eye infection as well as the nebulized form is used to treat pseudomonas aeruginosa in people with cystic fibrosis. In this way, the adverse effects are very much minimized and they are used to treat variety of infections like respiratory tract infection, urinary tract, blood, bone, soft tissue infection. Now, see these amino glycosides are specifically effective against aerobic gram negative organisms. The reason is, in presence of oxygen, amino glycosides will get into the bacterial cell. See, unless they get into the bacterial cell, they cannot inhibit protein synthesis and they need oxygen to get inside the bacterial cell. They are ineffective against anaerobes, where uh, bacteria which do not use oxygen. So, they can be used to treat proteus, Escherichia coli, Klebsiella pneumonia, Enterobacter, Serratia, uh, infection causing bacteria. <coughs> now, streptomycin is isolated from a soil bacteria Streptomyces griseus in 1944 by Selman Walkman. Uh, and Walkman is the first uh, uh, a researcher who coined the term antibiotic. Now, it was the first effective agent to treat tuberculosis. Now, see, be, it used to be a combination of streptomycin, isoniazid, and paraminous salicylic acid, but before that, the first known antibiotic to use to treat tuberculosis was streptomycin. Now, it is also used to treat endococcal endocarditis like that. And its activity is m more in gram-negative than gram-positive. Now, the problem is uh, resistance is rapidly developed. That is the reason why it is not recommended as a monotherapy. As a single drug, streptomycin is never used because of the rapid emergence of resistance. And it is not absorbed orally and it is acid-sensitive. See, when you see the streptomycin, it has got a guanido groups. Guanido groups are strongly basic groups, so they develop a positive charge. So, they cannot be absorbed orally and they are water soluble. And see, because they are already polar compounds, they should be given in intravenous form. And metabolism, they will not be metabolized much. They are excreted as such because they are already water soluble. Now, let us see the structure of uh, streptomycin. See, as we have seen, you have a sugar attached to this amino uh, uh, ring with the help of a glycosidic bond. Hence, they are called as amino glycosides. Now, when you see streptomycin is made up of three rings, streptidine, streptose and N-methylglucosamine. Now, streptidine is a derivative of inositol. In inositol ring, at one and three position, two guanido groups are attached. 
So it is a derivative of inositol ring, which is glycosidic acid. This is the glycoside bond, bond bound to streptose. Streptose is a furanose derivative, furanose carbohydrate. And the streptose is again bonded to N-methyl glucosamine. Glucosamine is a pyranose derivative. So streptomycin has got all the three rings. Now, when you see the structural activity relationship, let us understand these things. Now, see, in streptose, you have this aldehyde group is there. You reduce this aldehyde to alcohol or you oxidize this aldehyde to acids, both of them. Uh, see, the problem with... Uh, Mm, reduction of alcohol is it it creates a it creates dihydrostreptomycin which has got a, a major adverse effect called severe deafness so reduction will retain the activity but adverse effect is increased oxidation reduces the activity so there is no point in changing this group now the next one oxidation of methyl group in alpha streptose to methylene hydroxy gives an active analog with no advantage over streptomycin so this methyl group also, give me a second, methyl group in alpha streptose. See so this methyl group, even if you change it, there is no much advantage is there. Now the other things, modification of amino methyl group in glucosamine. Now see in glucosamine there is an amino methyl group is there. Modifying demethylation, you change anything, it reduces activity of streptomycin. Now even if there is a change in guanido groups, it also decreases activity. So all the three rings in streptose, you change this aldehyde group to you reduce or oxidize. If you reduce it, the activity is remained, but adverse effects are increased. Oxidation reduces activity. Even there, if there is a change in methyl group, also reduces activity. Glucosamine and methylamine, if you change anything, it reduces activity. Gonadal groups are also required for activity. So this is about structure activity relationship of streptomycin. Now the next one is kenamycin. Now kenamycin is isolated from streptomyces kenamycetase and it is a mixture of at least three compounds a b c now kenamycin gentamycin neomycin paramycin all of them are chemically stable now when you see the structure of kenamycin see this c3 hydroxy group is phosphorylated whereas c6 amine is acetylated this is the major pathway of resistance or metabolism by the enzymes. If bacteria acetylates this amine group or phosphorylate this hydroxy group, the activity is reduced and that is what is a resistance pathway. So Pseudomonas aeruginosa and enrobes are resistant to these drugs. You cannot use kenamycin to treat them, but it is used in combination to treat mycobacterial diseases. Now, see, the kenamycins do not have D-ribose molecule that is present in streptomycin kind of drugs. You can see, you don't have this five-membered ring. Ribose ring is not there. All are six-membered rings. And uh, all the three differ in these two groups. See, there is a difference in these T groups. Remaining everything is similar one. Moving to the next one. Now, neomycin. Neomycin is isolated from streptomyces fradae as a mixture of A, B, C. Now, it composed of four rings. Unlike streptomycin and kenamycin, it is composed of four rings. And it has got less toxic, less toxic than streptomycin. Now, it is formulated as a sulfate salt, which is hygroscopic photosensitive powder. It is mostly used to treat gastrointestinal, dermal, and peritoneal infection. It is a broad spectrum as streptomycin. The advantage is it is less toxic than streptomycin. Bacterial resistant is also rarely acquired. These two features uh, will make neomycin uh, clinical utility more. Now, aminoglycosides, let us understand adverse effects of aminoglycosides. Now, aminoglycosides are ototoxic. They damage cochlea and hair cells, and that results in hearing impairment. If it is enhanced, if a person is taking loop diuretics, see, loop diuretics also cause ototoxicity, hearing impairment. So the combination of the, these two drugs will enhance that uh, adverse effect. Nephrotoxic, they will cause kidney damage and inhibit the release of acetylcholine. And this release, when acetylcholine release is inhibited, it affects the skeletal muscles and may cause a kind of neuromuscular junction block. It is, uh, so see, neuromuscular junction problems are there in myasthenia gravis. So these drugs are contraindicated in, uh, in people suffering with myasthenia gravis. Some of the non-specific adverse effects are it may cause nausea, vomiting, and allergic reactions, and it has also shown teratogenic effects. So hence, they are contraindicated in pregnant women. 
so this is about uh, amino glycosides thank you for watching this video if you like the video do subscribe and share thank you for watching